Now I'll show you some of the new features in, in uh, Fusion Software version 2. So some pretty cool things. Uh, they've made some enhancements. Let's uh, go over some of those. So for example, let's say you're in the FMS and you want to do some direct to uh, navigation. So what they did here is they changed it uh, a little uh, slightly. Let's press uh, the icon. So the waypoint icon is uh, what I use as the terminology of what actions you want on that particular waypoint rather than touching the icon name and changing it. So they took away the, the one of the direct options in here, which was the direction. So they left this one, which makes sense. So if we select that, it brings up a compass rose. So right now, if I say just execute direct to that and execute it, right, boom. That's the course. But let's say you want to do an omni bearing selector. In other words, you want to be able to select your own course into that waypoint. So if we did that, we came here, we said direct, and then down here, you have the capacity to be able to change this uh, entry point. So in here, let's say, and so we touch this to highlight it. Then literally, we just change, what we're doing is we're changing the CCP so that let's say that we'd really like to be going into that waypoint on about a 290 heading. So we'll come back here. It ex it, so right now it says 290. So then when we execute that, right, so now that we have that, so now we've executed that waypoint. There we go. You have to click on it again to verify. And you can see this here. So notice because that has to be solid magenta. It can't just be dash. So it has to be solid. You notice when we first did it, wait a minute, nothing happened. So now you notice that here on the MFD, it's showing with that dash line. Now if we execute it. That's our new inbound course to Alpha November Yankee. So that's how you do it. So remember, let's do that again. Come here, execute. We'll come to the waypoint, direct to, if you want to select a particular heading to Omni Bearing Selector to uh, head to that waypoint, you select that. We change the value. Let's say now we want to, uh, just picking a number, let's say 310. Press the top of that. That has to be solid. So now once that's solid and execute that, then that will give us a new heading there. Toll data, let's talk about that. Takeoff and landing distances, right? So, and also the V speeds. So that's a new feature in version two, so let's talk about that. So first of all, we come here to set up. We've got our flight plan, right? So I always start here anyway, make sure everything's working, the FMSs are working. Right now we're inside a hangar, so some of the things are don't work quite right. We can check our sensors, make sure those are okay. Check our defaults, we've got those uh, set from before. Uh, so we've got all those set by uh, default. But now let's come in here, see the told? Here's where the told standards is under defaults. Anti's off or on, you've got that. Takeoff flaps 15. Lineup distance, that's important for some operators. So let's say lineup distance, and that's the distance from the end of the runway when you actually line up and stop. So let's say you really tra travel 250 feet. It's just an offset for the end of the runway. So that's kind of not a bad idea to have it. Weight and fuel, we have that set up. Return, alternate, so we've got the speeds, uh, everything else, climb, descent, we've got those, our VNAVs are set. So now let's come up to the flight plan. So now we've loaded our flight plan. So in here we have the wind temperatures. Uh, so this shows our average winds, cruise and descent and detailed wind. So you can actually put that information in. And there's some data that can be pulled from, if you have the data link, it'll pull some of the, the information. Uh, not always consistent, but you can go ahead if you want to and actually load the data if you'd like to for your climb, cruise, and descent. To, even here, you notice it shows a waypoint, right? You can actually put those in by waypoints if you want to. Uh, fuel, we have that. That's a fuel setup. So in through here, we have we're going to use the calculated or sensed. So if we use sensed, right now it's going to say, hey, that's what we're sensed directly from the sensors, where we didn't have on one. Uh, taxi, you can put that in. Reserve, you can set those. 
uh, set up on the defaults. We changed them, but still for some reason it still, still shows 200. So let's say that our, really we're just going to 150 for uh, taxi. And in our reserve, let's just lower that to 1,000. So we've got that. So that's set. So you always want to check those. Fuel performance is predicted or measured. Predicted gives a little bit more information based on some wins if you have that data loaded. Uh, it also is a little bit more accurate sometimes. Measured is just strictly what your current ground speed is and, and it's calculating that. So that didn't execute. So let's see if that should have taken it. Bingo. Okay, so we've got that. Make sure that's uh, solid. So now we have that information. Here's our weights. So this is our weight. So right now, this is our weight in the aircraft. We got fuel 1728. You can just literally put everybody in here if you want to. It really doesn't matter. So you can just put everybody in here. Let's say we've got 603 people total. You can load that. So that's good and execute. So now what we've got, that's our, our basic information right now that we have 600. Our takeoff weight is 10, 5, uh, 24. We don't have a lot of fuel today. So then we come over to, so I just go through and check these things, right? Again, flight plan, wind attempts, if you want to put any of those in. The fuel in through there, uh, any changes, weight, what you have there. Then you come to calc. In calc, this is where you come in through here. So we have temperature, winds. We can put uh, winds in if we want to. Let's say it's 195 at uh, 10 knots, just for grips. It knows what runway we're going to use. So let's say the Q and NH our uh, altimeter setting is 2991. So then it's calculating. We got a headwind of about 10 knots. Runway slope doesn't have it much here at, at uh, in Wichita. Lineup distance didn't carry that through. So let's just put 150. Some things don't carry through. So I just kind of always kind of verify that. I have no idea why it's doing it. The conditions are dry, and then let's go ahead and post. So what'll happen when we post? Right, boom, 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 boom. So it's posted our V speeds. You can also, of course, come in manually and put the V speeds in through here, and with V speeds and mins, and you've got all these in through here, which are easy to set. In this particular case, I can turn them on or off. So I just turn them off with one click. I can come up and turn that one on. I'm just pressing the top of the CCP. This, of course, where you can put your approach speeds in. They'll also do approach speeds. Or we can just come up here and through here, and we're of course on the ground, so it doesn't like to load those right now. We can, and then uh, in through here, we can do our minimums, set our minimums, and say that we're on a barrel man. So we've got those set. So that's all done at that place. So it says V speeds deselected because they are deselected. We manually put those in. So if you ever see this, and that's because you've manually changed them. So if we ch want to get rid of that message, we can just say post. So that's how we do the total. Pretty easy. Uh, if you ever get a problems of uh, V-speed errors and so forth, occasionally that happens with uh, Fusion Software version 2. They're looking to fix that, not newer ones, but it at least gives you some nice distance information here on the runway. So we've got that lineup, totals us our 2559 is our total feelings. So in here we've got aircraft, of course, weight limits, all those other things you can check to verify. If you're not within limits, it will tell you. It won't let you calculate and post those V speeds because it says, hey, you're not, you don't have it set right. And then, of course, then we have this set up, and that hasn't changed, really. That's your flyer legs page. So that's another feature of uh, Fusion uh, Release 2 of the software. The weather has changed a little bit on uh, Fusion Software V2. Now, instead of using the old heads up XM receiver, they're using the Sirius XM. So it's changed a couple of things. One thing in particular that I really used to like to do is here and set up the, I could put a weather quartile window in there. That's gone. So if you saw that on your previous ones, and in fact, we have that in some of our documentation, you don't see a weather option in there to be able to put the weather. So then what you have to do is you have to select it primarily from you overlay the weather. We're not connected right now. We will do another one in flight. And this is where you do the reports. So you come here, find the reports, and load them for your destination. And we'll show that in a video in flight. 